Why hello there, you are all looking sharp, or sharp shooting, cause that's what you should be doing because the comp is just divine. Yeah, okay, I know we could probably work on these jokes, but you know. <laughs> Can you blame us? Hey everyone, welcome back to another Pro Guide CFT video. Today we're going to be taking a good look at patch 10.21's must play comps and why they have been so successful. Make sure to play these comps when you can and then you will definitely see a rise in rank. As with every top comps list, getting the top comp will not guarantee you first place, but it will give you a high enough chance to finish top 4, netting you that sweet, sweet LP. Positioning, items, and scouting are still your most important tools in this game, working together with your comp in order to give you guys that shiny first place. In this video, we'll be talking about each comp, a general playstyle guide, and a good look at the items that they use and their positioning. Patch 10.21 was fairly big and changes a lot of things, so a few different comps can rise to the top compared to what we are used to. And spoiler alert, a version of ninjas has made it to the top. I mean, I guess Zed is a ninja too, and he's been at the top, but that guy's kinda shady. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stop with those now. For our question of the day, which comp have you had the most success with so far in this patch? Before we dive right in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that is growing really, really fast. We have you guys to thank for that, and we want to continue building our community and helping you guys become a part of it. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below. With that all being said, let's go ahead and dive into our top comp for 10.21, and it is Divine. No, no, not the adjective, the noun. Yeah, we know you understood, but we just wanted to throw that last one in there. Anyway, Divine was wholly changed this patch to a different version of what it was before, and now has base increase in stats, with the duration of the buff varying, so it's pretty strong. Your carry is Warwick, with the side of Ash, Kindred, and Lee Sin. Kindred can carry Ash's items, but not too well, as most of their damage is AP related. With so many high cost units, you definitely need to have some flexibility in the beginning. You should get an early chosen and start building Warwick items on them. An interesting idea is Nami, as she can CC and static shift does extra damage, especially if it coincides with their auto attacks. Itemizing the early chosen is pretty great, unless it's a Jax or Irelia divine chosen, then you should probably itemize something else. Divine is a little bit like Darkstar was in the previous set. With the new change, its value as a splash has fallen a lot since the duration is so low. It's not really worth to run to Divine anymore if it was even worth before. You play whatever comp you like and try really hard to will the shop to give you that Warwick. That's when the Divine game really begins. No Warwick, no party. Four Divine is when it starts to be worth it, and six Divine is the goal. You can go ahead and get away with a good placement with four Divine if the rest of your comp is like Yone, Sed, and the like, and your items are just as good. To get six Divine, you will need to get level eight at some point. Cheating and staying at seven is doable. Due to Chosen reducing the requirements and allowing you to splash one or two more traits in there, but remember, Warwick's damage increase against CC'd units. You cannot always guarantee that his roar will stun something, or even that he will get that first kill to start snowballing. So you gotta help him out a little bit. Your favorite chosens are, besides Warwick himself, things like Hunter but not Aphilios, Brawler if you get another one in to have 4, or of course anything Divine. Since it's contested, playing a reroll Divine Wukong and then upgrading it from there is unfortunately not an option since there will be no units left when you level up after 3 starring him. So Warwick is one of the Divine chosen that you probably do not like too much. As a final note on this, do not underestimate Lee Sin. He can kick the competition out of the arena, which is pretty amazing for many pesky units that you can't kill or get to quickly. Overall, the comp is extremely strong, but also extremely contested, and thus can feel weak at times when playing against people who are not contested in their own comps. Ruling down at level 7 might be necessary. Riot has said that no hotfix is happening until after the weekend, and only if needed. It's also really position reliant against a couple of their popular comps right now, so stay tuned to hear about that. Their overall positioning of this comp is straightforward, and it kind of looks like this. You can keep two bunches in the back and the melee carries in the front. This is where the tricky part lies though. Auric is strong, but he is really vulnerable to big hits like Akali's spell. Getting an Akali behind him or making him run around the sharpshooters are two of the ways to beat him. So make sure that you put Warwick somewhere where he can A. Attack any relatively squishy unit and then stun the rest after he kills it, gaining an extra shiv damage on them. If you don't have shiv, then it's a good tactic or B, protect him from assassins. You can build a bunker in the backline and have the other units take initial hits while Warwick wails on them, or just put some units behind him that he can actually tank for them while he wails on the rest of their team. Similar things can be done with Lee Sin, especially with him targeting assassins. Due to him turning around, he will face the side of the map, having a high chance of kicking that Akali out really quickly. 
Static Shift has risen in popularity for Warwick due to him activating his own stun. However, the most important item is Quicksilver. Yeah, he shrugs off any CC on him once he activates Divine, but that's just a one-off. Those 10 seconds of immunity will be the ones that get him in that state and make him an absolute killing machine. We have started to like getting a tank item as a third one, like Bramble Vest. He might lack some damage, but Hunter and Huge attack speed make up for that in the long run. Ash gets leftovers or Kindred depending on what you run and if you get that chosen situation. The nice thing about this comp is it's amazing spat flexibility. It has good uses for mini spatula items, which creates interesting options for it. Divine spatula is obviously great, and 8 divine is pretty cool, but Ultra Wood Warwick remains a juggernaut. Vanguard can help you add a Sejuani and her ridiculous CCN to boost ship damage and so on. Unlike League of Legends, Lee Sin actually likes mana items, especially Hand of Justice, for that initial push into that first spell. Then, he kicks them to pieces. Let's move on to our next comp. From underrated to must play, this patch only buffed them, resulting in their definite domination over many of these lobbies in the past few days. Also, Teemo is now a unit, which is nice or bad. Actually, I'm not really sure about this one. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Sharpshooters are big on the fortune starts. There is someone who always gets a jinx from the initial loot boxes. If you're that someone, look for another sharpshooter, Tom and Annie, and then you're all set. Due to their weak early game, unless you have Ludens on Jinx, you can stack Fortune fairly well, while not taking a huge loss, since Jinx provides a ton of damage and CC, helping you kill a unit or two. You don't need to level up too quickly, but level 7 is an absolute must. Once you get a 7, unless you have a chosen Jinx, you should probably be selling your chosen and look for a 4 cost one. This comp functions well with many other 4 post chosens, like Jin, Aatrox, Riven, Cassio, and Sejuani. Their power up traits can vary as well. You'll often play Dusk with this, as the blanket spell power helps them a lot, and you can actually atomize Riven to provide with a sticky frontline that gives a lot of time to Jin and Jinx. Another line is the Cultist one, where you can add a couple of Cultists to the top of Jin and Aatrox and work from there. In essence, sharpshooters are really strong due to their constant buzz with no significant get nerfs, and the fact that they can counter Warwick pretty well, blowing him up before they can even get to them. Don't be too baited from the fortune streak. After you cash in the first time, if you can transition out of them, do it. You'll need that HP later. The cop uses a lot of different chosens, but excels with Dusk, Sharpshooter, and Cultist the most. A few different options present themselves depending on the chosen, but they are all pretty linear, going off of the core of Jinx and Jin plus a frontline. The most important thing with this comp is to separate your carries. There's not too much AoE due to Ari being unpopular, but even the act of going from one carry to another might be enough to help you beat them. So you want your comp to look something like this. You want the two carries separate and the buffers on them. You can position the Azir soldiers close to the two frontliners or as the buffers for assassins depending on the lobby. Ludens is crazy. Jinx instant procs the double damage, so starting terror is a really good option for this. Double Ludens Shoujin is a fairly interesting combo for this, or you can go ahead and add a Quicksilver in there. The attack speed angle is also decent, but you don't particularly need it. Jin uses his usual stuff with Lasso Whisperer being really good, along with Guardian Angel and Giant Slayer. Tank items are best for Riven or Sejuani, or even Aatrox if he's chosen and gets the extra stats. We have been waiting for Ninja Sins to come back, but honestly, it's really tough. For Ninjas, it's hard to transition transition into, lacking power unless you have that 3 star Kali. With Shade Carries not really being too viable of an option, the comp really struggles. So Assassins it is, but the ninja line is always open if you're uncontested. It has a really strong ceiling so don't disregard it if you have the option to go for it. In the early game, you can use anything, but make sure that you get early chosens to carry a Kali items, even a Zed can do it for RFC, but keep another one in case you go for ninjas later. This build usually wants to go to 7, both for optimal roll chances as well as to have enough units to put in. Finding an assassin chosen besides Diana, which is kind of meh, is good. Even Pike is quite decent as a chosen. Playing 4 assassins early will result in a huge burst of damage, but assassins are really squishy in their 1 star form and really transform when they are in their 2 star. So it's a pretty good idea to slow roll at 7, finding your 2 stars or moving towards that 3 star Katarina or Akali. These are your 2 carries, because talent is a little bit underwhelming without enlightened. Getting either of them to 3 star is actually your win con, so always aim for that. Without either or both of them at this point, you will have difficulty getting far enough. If you play the ninja angle, you can actually play the early mid game as assassins and go for the 4 ninja transition once you find a Shen. The rest is the same, with Akali alone being your win con this time. Only try the ninja angle if you hit a relatively early Shen and have great Akali items. And with the ninja buff last patch, they can actually do some serious damage when all 4 of them are on the field, but the comp struggles getting more than top 3 without 3 star Akali, so always try to get it. 
Full backline positioning for this one. If you want a frontline, you can go ahead and use the vanguards like this. Assassins jump into the far back anyway regardless of where you place them. The main point of this outside is that you can target enemy carries and then avoid ciphers on anyone or shrouds on Katarina. This is without any chosen, but with assassin chosen you can go for that chase trait and then cut back on spreading too much. Mystic might be more important than Vanguard depending on the lobby. Another important part that we can't really show here is to avoid your Akali getting stuck on something like an Aurelia. You really want her targeting somebody squishy, kill it in one round and then start whaling on the rest. The ninja cop really depends on what your chosen is, but assassin is the best chosen for sure, where you position like this. Akali needs RFC really really bad. Blue buff is the next important item, but it's not an absolute must. A more defensive build can go for RFC, Gunblade, and Quicksilver. It does not do as much burst, but has more sustain and CC immunity. Gunblade is best reserved for Katarina though, and so is Quicksilver. Akali can use blue buff and infinity edge to complete her trio of items and literally one shot anything in the backline. Katarina needs Gunblade and Quicksilver, with a third item usually involving something with AP, like Rabadon's or Jeweled Gauntlet. In the ninja comp, you want to give Shen a couple of defensive of items with the Kali itemization remaining the same. For example, a stone plate or thief's gloves have really high value on Shen. And that's gonna be it for our must play comps. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move to our honorable mentions. Warlord is actually interesting right now. For similar reasons as Assassins and because of all of this extra stats with a 3 star Katarina, you can actually wreck some faces. Cultists are much better once you 2 star everything. Their early game got a little bit better, especially with the Chosen, but their mid game still suffers and their units are contested as always. Still, a comp that can go high Cultists will probably win. Duelists without perfect items are not great, but besides Jax and Lee, the units are really uncontested and can be the dark horse of the lobby. And that's gonna be it for the video, we will be uploading every week on Wednesday and Sunday. Please forgive me if my voice sounds a little bit rough, it is 4am right now, and I should probably be sleeping instead of trying to play more TFT. Anyway, if you guys want to know more about my life, go ahead and follow me on my Instagram and unfortunately TikTok at Nathan underscore ING. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to check out our TFT content on YouTube and our high elo coaches on ProGuides.com. If you have any feedback for us, comment below and we'll be happy to read what you have to say. I always take constructive criticism quite well, but I also love compliments. So if you have some of those, go ahead and leave them in the comments below as well. Now get out there and farm some LP using some must play comps that you saw here today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.